David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have for you something that I, I never would have purchased for myself. Uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, what I mean by that is it's good to occasionally venture out of my comfort zone and kind of take a critical look at something that's different for me. Uh, just because my initial reaction uh, was that it was a pen that really wouldn't appeal to me, uh, but that doesn't mean that it might not be a pen that would be perfect for you. Um, you know, plus, uh, you know, it's like being an adult with certain foods. Uh, you might not like broccoli, but you know, it, it's been so long that you might not remember why you don't like broccoli. You just remember that you don't like it. So it's good every once in a while to eat some broccoli to uh, either confirm the fact that, yep, you don't like it, uh, or maybe your tastes have changed a little bit. And now, uh, you know, broccoli is not so bad. You know, growing up, I, I never liked onions, uh, but now I love them. Tastes change over time. So, I have a style of pen for you today that, for me, was a bit of broccoli. Uh, and that pen is the Cross Classic Century. And the model I have is one that was recently released in conjunction with the film The Man Who Invented Christmas. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and the features of the Cross Classic Century, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and then stay tuned because I will let you know how you can enter to win this very pen, courtesy of Cross, who provided this to me for review and for giveaway. Uh, the Man Who Invented Christmas is in theaters right now as of this review. Uh, the movie actually centers on the author Charles Dickens and his real-life influences that led him to the writing of his book, The Christmas Carol. Uh, from what I understand, the, uh, the story in the film is fairly accurate in representing his experiences and inspirations that helped him form the basis of the novel. Uh, the pen arrives in this fairly large box. Uh, you know, this is uh, Christopher Plummer who plays the inspiration, of, who the, or the inspiration for Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, and this is Dan Stevens who portrays Charles Dickens. Uh, you know, I thought it was a bit odd that other than just a couple of stickers here and here, uh, there's nothing on the box indicating that there is a pen inside here. Um, when you open up the box, inside we have a bottle of Cross Black Ink. Uh, and then you open up the other side, and we have a real box. Now, uh, I will say that this, is, uh, this box has a rather problematic design, because if you open up uh, the box up top, uh, just like I did, then you can remove the uh, ink, uh, and then there's no issue. But if you open up the bottom of the box first, this ink is still up here, and there is nothing stopping the ink from dropping all the way down. Uh, now, this is, there's a plastic box on the outside of this, and so it can survive. But, you know, um, still, if the design of the box uh, causes a potential disaster 50% of the time, then it's not the best design. So, just my opinion on that. Now, um, here's the regular pen box. I like cross boxes. For a hard cardboard box, they feel very solid. Uh, and I like this uh, two-tone coloring, the black and the, uh, and the yellow. Or, or more gold, more of a gold. Uh, that uh, inside the top of the box, uh, we have the pen. Uh, let me take this out just for one second here. And inside here, we have... Uh, well, actually here. Inside here we have the Cross logo on the inside of the box. It's kind of padded with silk-like material and has the Cross logo. Uh, and then under the flap here we have the standard Cross marketing material, like a use and care guide. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, it would have been nice with a limited edition model like this uh, if it had uh, edition specific materials. Uh, that's just not something specific to Cross. Um, uh, it would, it's something that other companies do as well. You know, if you have a special edition, it'd be nice to have special marketing. But I understand the production costs involved in something like that. Especially if you're only making a limited number of these. Uh, you know, I do believe this is a, uh, a special or a limited edition, but it's unclear how large of a run it is and the pens are not numbered. Uh, and then also included is uh, two cross uh, black cartridges. Okay, let's set that aside here for a second. And now we have the more important thing, which is the pen. Uh, this is the Cross Classic Century. Uh, the cap and the barrel are made of metal, brass, I believe, uh, and it has a very nice matte black finish. 
and all of the appointments are 23 karat gold plated. Uh, you know, I consider this to be something of a, of a checkbook pen. Uh, it's very thin uh, and uh, would fit very well in the fold of a checkbook if anyone wrote checks. Uh, it's just a, a much thinner pen than I would choose for myself. Uh, and I also like that even though this pen is tied to a Christmas movie, its features are not overly related to the holiday. You know, you look a little odd if you wear a Santa hat in July, but the theme of this pen is generic enough that you won't feel awkward using this pen at any point of the year. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the finial. Uh, the end of the pen has a 23 karat gold plated finial, which is flat on the end uh, and has a groove filled with black lacquer. Uh, right below the clip is something I thought was kind of cool. It's tough to get a good photo of it. This one's a little blurry, but the uh, cross logo is there, slightly raised and a bit shinier. Uh, I kind of like that that's kind of a hidden detail on the pen that you have to look closely to notice. Uh, then we have the most distinctive feature on this model of the Classic Century, and that's the clip. Uh, on the top of the clip is this intricate feather. Uh, you know, I really like that the veins on the quill really aren't that all straight. Each one kind of has its own personality. Uh, and I think it really adds to the character of the pen. Uh, I do wish, however, that they would have fashioned a, a slit at the end of the quill to indicate, to indicate that this was a dip pen. Uh, because, you know, as it looks right now, it's just a feather, not a pen. Uh, you know, it's a small detail, though, but it's a small detail like that that kind of bugs me. Uh, the clip is very functional. Uh, it slips on and off really nicely. Uh, and then the cap uh, angles up a little bit and then is straight. Uh, there is a ring right here in the uh, transition from the cap to the barrel. Uh, on a lot of pens, uh, there, if there's a piece of trim at the beginning of the barrel, it's actually part of the interior section. Uh, but in this case, that's not the case. You can see it's actually part of the barrel. The barrel is straight for the most part until about here, and then it tapers down to the end with some uh, rounded edges. The cap snaps off, and here we have a gold-plated steel nib. Uh, it has the Cross Lion logo, which I, I think looks really neat. I, I like that logo a lot and the M to indicate that this is a medium nib. Uh, this model of the Century Classic is only available in medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The medium steel nib uh, was a real pleasant surprise. Uh, it's a lot smoother than I thought it would be, and it has a really healthy ink flow. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, I really like it a great deal. The section actually begins with a raised ring, which serves two purposes. It's a bit of a stop for your grip, but uh, also it's what interacts with the cap to create the capping mechanism for this pen. Uh, typically with the snap cap, you'll either have a raised ring here at the beginning of the section or at the very back, depending on whether the uh, capping mechanism is on the front or back of the cap. Uh, the section is plastic. Uh, it's on the thin side, as the rest of the pen. Uh, I wish it were metal, though. That would have been nice. Um, while the cap and the barrel of this pen are metal, since it's fairly thin and thin metal, uh, it's not overly heavy. But the weight of the metal really helps add some substance to what otherwise may, may be a very thin, skinny pen. You know, this is a skinny pen. But then again, so are quills. Uh, in regard to the writing comfort for me, it's more suited to shorter writing sessions. Uh, something uh, this thin becomes a little uncomfortable for me if I write with it for an extended periods of time. Uh, the cap does post, and it does so securely. I have a tendency to use this pen posted. Uh, and mainly, also, I like looking down and seeing the feather when I'm, when I'm writing. That's kind of nice. This is a cartridge converter pen. It does come with a converter as well as the two cartridges I showed earlier. Uh, the converter is a decent size. Uh, Cross does use proprietary converters and cartridges, so if you don't want to refill the cartridges they provide, then you need to purchase uh, Cross cartridges uh, if you don't want to use your own ink. Uh, on the Cross site, this pen retails for $95, and, and I feel that that's a, actually a reasonable price for what you get here, especially considering that the uh, bottle of ink is included. Uh, the ink sells for $15 on its own. So, do I now like broccoli? Do I now like thin pens? This pen has a lot I like about it. Uh, I, I really like the matte black finish. 
Um, and some of the artistic details about this pen, uh, like the feather uh, the, and the somewhat camouflaged cross logo above the clip, um, I really like those as well. And, and I really find this nib to be outstanding. Uh, I really like the nib on this pen a great deal. So while I prefer a pen with a bit more girth, um, you know, I was really pleased with this pen and enjoyed the experience of writing with it, uh, mainly due to the high quality steel nib in, on here. In regard to the giveaway, uh, for both the pen and the bottle of Crossback Black Ink, um, all you need to do in order to enter is to be a subscriber here on my channel and to leave a comment here on YouTube. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2017, and you have until end of day on Saturday the 16th to enter. Uh, at that time, I'll select a winner randomly for those who have entered. Uh, in regard to a comment topic, uh, since this pen is a tie-in to a holiday movie, uh, why don't you let me know what your favorite holiday movie is? And yes, um, I would consider Die Hard to be a holiday movie, which would be my answer. The topic is not required, just a suggestion. Uh, thanks again to Cross for providing this pen for review and for giveaway. Um, if you're interested in this pen, you could check it out on the Cross site via the link below in the notes. Um, if it's something that you intend to purchase, if you would do so using that link, I'd appreciate it. Doing so helps support this channel. So, now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a ride example. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Cross Classic Century. Uh, in regard to some other rather thin pens, uh, here it is with a Pilot Metro. Then here it is with a, uh, a Lamy Studio. Uh, and then here it is with a uh, Pelican Stola 3. And then in regard to three pens that I'll be reviewing here soon, uh, one is the Le Bon Flora. Uh, and then I have another one from uh, a pen company called Online, and this is their Vision Cork, which is actually a calligraphy set. Uh, and then finally, here is a pen from Enso called the Piuma. So look for each of these coming up here uh, in the relative near future. So here we have the Cross Classic Century. This is a medium steel nib, and the ink that I'm using today is Cross Violet. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite purples. Uh, it's very uh, dense and uh, a deep purple. And here it is in comparison with uh, Lamy Dark Lilac, which is one of my other favorite purples, uh, and which is a little bit uh, darker than the Cross Violet. Uh, and then here's one that's a little bit lighter that is one of my favorites as well, which is the Pilot Orochizuku Mirasaki Shikapu. Then this is what the uh, the cross bottle of ink looks like. Uh, it's fairly large. It's 62.5 milliliters, uh, and it's a, a nice size bottle with a good size top, and you can get uh, just about any pen in here. That uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite purples. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, that I mentioned it before in the review, but this uh, steel nib is very smooth uh, and, and very pleasant to use. Uh, that I uh, it really exceeded my expectations, and, and I liked writing my review with it very much. Uh, that it's a nice, healthy medium uh, that lays down a, a fair amount of ink. Uh, that you're not going to get tons of line variation out of here. A little bit if you push it. But in regard to ink flow, that it's fairly healthy uh, when you lay down a decent amount of ink here. And in regard to reverse writing, that's a little on the scratchy side, but it's not bad. 
And then in regard to some fast writing, The, uh, the, the nib has no problem and feed has no problem in keeping up. So here we have the Cross Classic Century. Uh, that while it's a, a style of pen as far as uh, the thinness of it that uh, that doesn't necessarily fit my taste 100%, uh, I am very impressed with the way it performs and the way it writes uh, and that I think whoever ends up winning this pen will be very happy with it. So don't forget to leave your entry uh, in regard to that. And then, like I said, if you wanted to pick this pen up, by all means, use the link uh, below in the notes because it helps support my channel. And thanks again to Cross for sending this pen for review and for giveaway. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.